break up. There's the case that makes you. Gives you that leg up. Gets you recognized as a shining new star in the squad. The case that you solve that shows that you have the gumption, the gung-ho, the get-up-and-go to make you stand out from your average rank-and-file patrolman. This could be the one goal. Welcome to 1947 Los Angeles. Our brave GIs are back from the war and housing developments are springing up all over town so that each of these men has a place to settle down, raise a family, and live the American dream. But it's not all sunshine and palm trees in LA as war hero and new LAPD recruit Cole Phelps is about to discover. In LA Noir, you take on the role of Phelps and your investigations take you to the dark side of the City of Angels. It's an intoxicating journey drenched in authentic late 40s style. As a detective, your work investigating crime scenes is often about the smallest details, and the richness of these details in L.A. Noir makes rummaging around grisly crime scenes and perusing the personal effects of victims a compelling process. The homes of murder victims feel lived in as a result of pictures on the walls, notes pinned on refrigerators, and clothing tossed on the floor and forgotten. Pick up an official document while rummaging through some files, and you'll see that it looks genuine right down to the fine print. This attention to detail makes the often unsavory business of being a detective deeply absorbing. On top of this, the sprawling recreation of late 40s LA is well-researched and stunning, and the period fashions, actual automobiles, and music of the era, along with a score that evokes the style of some of the great composers of film noir, weave a spell that's sure to steer the heart of anyone with an affection for 1940s style. The art direction that pervades every aspect of L.A. Noir is a huge part of what makes this game such a memorable experience. And if you want the game to look more like Out of the Past than Chinatown, there's an option to play in crystal clear black and white. He's got a gun! But all that attention to detail wouldn't amount to much if it wasn't in the service of a game that was worthy of it. Thankfully, L.A. Noir is. You play as Cole Phelps, Phelps is played by Aaron Staten, best known for his role on Mad Men, and thanks to L.A. Noir's use of a new technology called motion scanning, his performance goes far beyond voice acting. Phelps's face yes, is Staten's face, and while motion scanning doesn't quite capture all the soul of an actor's performance, it nonetheless allows for a great deal of the subtlety of that performance to come through. It may take a bit of adjustment seeing almost but not quite real faces on these characters, and there's sometimes a bit of blurriness around the lips which can be distracting, but for the most part it's very effective, allowing for rich and nuanced performances that seem to fully inhabit the world of the game. I hear another bang, and another, and another. And this isn't just for show. The story of L.A. Noir hits harder because its characters look and sound so believable, and the performances have a concrete impact on gameplay, too. When you're interrogating a suspect or questioning a witness, it's the facial expressions of a real person that you're reading when determining what approach to take. Whatever he got, he got what was coming. But it had nothing to do with me. As Phelps makes a name for himself in the department, he's called upon to start heading investigations himself. And that means questioning witnesses and interrogating suspects. During interrogations, you select something to question the witness or suspect about from a list in your notebook. Once the person responds to your question, you have three choices. Truth, doubt, lie. In the early cases, the game holds your hand through these processes. And as a result, they can feel narrow and artificial. But once the training wheels come off, the process gets a lot more interesting. It becomes entirely possible to miss vital clues at crime scenes or fail to get important information from a witness, and suspects behave more naturally, making them tougher to read. You're the fall guy from Mickey Cohen. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a color. There's only one save file, which the game updates automatically, so you can't just restart when an interrogation goes bad. But this is for the best. It's far more interesting to just rely on your instincts and finish the case to see how things play out, at which point you can restart the case and try for a better outcome if you like. Cases can definitely take some very different turns depending on your actions, which makes replaying them worthwhile. Regardless of who you put in the slammer, you may come away from some cases with the troubling feeling that you didn't get the right man. That may sound unsatisfying, and in a way it is, but it's a good kind of unsatisfying. 
Noir isn't about tidy resolutions and happy endings. It's often about the cases where the truth is elusive, the cases that keep cops up at night. And L.A. Noir rewards your patience. A story strand left unresolved in one case may come up again a few cases later, and something you thought would be left unclear may finally come into focus. Less satisfying is the way that the resolution of one story case doesn't have any bearing on the next. For instance, you may completely blow one case, earning the scorn of your captain, but the next case will still begin with him showering you with praise. L.A. Noir has an overarching story to tell, and it's a good one, but the inelegant way in which it keeps that story on track can be jarring. I made it my mind a long time ago. KGBL calling car 14 Adam, 14 Adam, come in. Driving in L.A. Noir is fun. Cars are responsive and swift, which is particularly important during the game's many car chases. Still, it's not so enjoyable that you'll always relish the thought of driving from one end of the game's large map to the other. And thankfully, you can usually opt to have your partner drive, which functions as a fast travel option to your selected destination. The gunplay is very similar to that in games like Grand Theft Auto 4. You can hide behind cover, and with aim assist enabled, it's very easy to pop out and squeeze off a few accurate shots. The shooting itself feels fine, but it's the context and atmosphere that makes some firefights stand out. Strangely, once the bullets start flying, the only way out for the criminals is in the coroner's wagon. Shooting suspects in the legs is as fatal as shooting them in the head. It's a bit disappointing that you can't try to keep these criminals alive so that they can face a trial. Not everyone you pursue ends up dead, though. You regularly find yourself pursuing suspects on foot, and these chases don't always end with someone headed to the morgue. You're under arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. Pursuing suspects is easy. You just try to keep Phelps headed straight for his target, and he handles all the climbing over fences and leaping between rooftops automatically. In some cases, you have the option to try to bring the suspect to a halt by firing a warning shot. To do this, you must keep your reticle fixed on the fleeing suspect for a few seconds as a meter fills up. But strangely, there are many chases in which you're not given this option. It's clear that the game doesn't want you stopping suspects before you've experienced the thrilling chase through a crumbling movie set that awaits you or whatever else it may have in store, but this restriction nonetheless feels artificial and limiting. The text review goes into a lot more detail, but ultimately, L.A. Noir is a complete and satisfying experience. You come into contact with the seamy side of the movie industry and with major players in the gambling racket. You meet working stiffs and powerful businessmen, low-ranking mob thugs, and Mickey Cohen, one of the most powerful gangsters in Los Angeles at the time. L.A. Noir is a unique game with a terrific sense of period atmosphere, absorbing investigation mechanics, and a haunting tale, with plenty of moments that would feel right at home in a classic film noir. Those moments will stay with you long after you've retired your badge and gun. Witness says a tall white guy, our shooter, put two in the Vic's head and then threw his piece. I need you guys to try and recover the gat. You want us to look anywhere in particular? Give it your best shot, guys. The dead guy's a low life. I'm not expecting any miracles.